When I stand here before you, what do you see? A woman, a black woman, what about a cleaning lady, or maybe a high-tech influencer? Two months ago, I was chosen as one of the 21 most influential women in the Israeli high-tech industry. But just three years ago, I was cleaning floors, and I had zero knowledge in technology. <laughs> How did that happen? Like every good story, it started with a dream. I grew up in a tough neighborhood, which at the time was a traditional Ethiopian community that was male-dominated. I used to be a very shy girl. I always thought that my background, my look, and my skin dictated who I was and where I will end up to be. So I always tried to be invisible. I used to watch a lot of American TV where the princess would always be rescued by a white, brave, and I remember thinking that if I wanted to get out of my neighborhood, I'm going to have to work very hard, dreaming to travel the world and be successful. But more than that, I was dreaming of a knight in shining armor to come rescue me so he would live happily ever after. Sounds like a nice dream, right? It turns out that my real dream was to escape, to escape the life I had. As a child, my friends used to always tease me because of the small I have on my face, right next to my nose. One time, they started to give my mole names. Nowadays, I can kind of see the humor in it, but at that moment, I felt so sad and embarrassed that I ran upstairs into the bathroom. I took a razor. I looked at myself in the mirror and just started to cut into my mole. It was so painful, but I didn't care. I didn't care that it was painful. I didn't care that I was bleeding. I didn't care that I was hurting myself. I just wanted it to go away. The morning after, I woke up feeling so happy knowing that the mall is gone. But as I looked at myself in the mirror, it was still there. I was so mad, so mad. Can you imagine? It was so painful trying to remove it. And it was supposed to be my ticket out of being teased. I decided to do it again. But as I took the razor, I realized that I was doing something insanely wrong. I was trying to be different in order to please someone else. I was letting others tell me how I should be and feel. I then stared into my own eyes in the mirror and said, Shoshi, see yourself as yourself. You are beautiful, and no one should ever tell you otherwise. I was 14 years old. At 14, I embraced who I truly am, and I realized that I am unique. Black or white, blonde or redheaded, with freckles on your face 
or with them all. Each and every one of you is unique. And you should never let anyone define your worth. <laughs> My childhood dream to escape to a better reality remained. And when I was 23, I was finally able to leave my neighborhood and travel the world. After a few months of traveling while visiting in Philadelphia, I happened to walk into a mall called the King of Persia Mall. And that's when I saw him. He was standing right there. He was six feet tall, very muscular. He had blondish hair and green eyes. He was just standing there holding his hands on his waist like Superman. The light from the glass ceiling acted as a spotlight on him. And it was as if the universe was telling me, here is your night. We fell in love, we were married, and had our first baby. My childhood dream had come true, and we were going to live happily ever after. Only I couldn't. I couldn't live happily ever after because I still had dreams of self-growth. And since I didn't have a work permit in the USA, I couldn't pursue this. We flew back to Israel, returning to the same two-bedroom apartment I grew up in. Here I am again, living in the same neighborhood with my mom, my brother, and my sister. Only now, I also added a husband, a child, and had another baby on the way. It felt like going back to square one. This was too much to bear, so we rented a small apartment. And just a couple months, right after my beautiful daughter was born, things hit rock bottom. I received an electric bill that I just couldn't afford. So now what? No heat? And that's when I finally understood I could either fall into self-pity and despair, or I can rely on myself to move forward in my life. Instead of looking for a knight in shining armor to come rescue me, I decided to become my own knight. I sat down and made a list of everything that was important for me to achieve in my next dream job. I wanted financial freedom, so I wouldn't need to depend on anyone but myself. I also needed the flexibility, since it seemed like I was going to be a single mother pretty soon. I visualized myself working in an office with an open space where I can show my true skills and abilities in pursuing my dreams of self-growth. However, since we needed the money right away, I started to clean houses. This was not easy, but it did not stop me from doing what needed to be done. And it sure didn't mean that, that I was losing my focus towards my next dream job. I now knew exactly where I wanted to go. After a few weeks, I got a job offer to come do the cleaning for a high-tech company. Now, I didn't want to continue and do the cleaning, but it was clear to me that this was an opportunity. If I had to clean, I might as well do it in the place I wanted to be. Working in a high-tech company would have allowed me to be in the same room with a group of people I eventually wanted to work with. I took that cleaning job so I could be visible with the right people. 
I remember the first evening I came to clean the offices at Walk Me, and I just couldn't believe my eyes. It looked exactly like the place I visualized for my next dream job. As I'd clean the office, I'd visualize myself as if I was working in one of their high-tech positions. And I enjoyed every second of it. I'd go around talking to people at every chance I got. I'd share with them my future dreams and goals. I made sure they all see my shining armor. They loved my confidence and presence. I would walk around there as if I was a boss of my own department. <laughs> Two weeks after, one of the guys in the office came to me and he said, I overheard you speaking and I was wondering, are you good with computers? I quickly said yes. <laughs> he then said that there's a new QA position opening and that all I really need is a good knowledge of computers. He also said that he's going to try and get me an interview. I then grabbed him and said, you are not trying to get me that interview. You are getting me that interview. <laughs> now, remember, I didn't have any clue about what high tech is or what the QA position meant. <laughs> but I knew that this is the path that I was supposed to take. That night, I came back home and downloaded the company's website app. I started starting it from scratch. By the time it was 5 a.m., you could have considered me as a partially onboarded employee. From that stage on, every technical interview went smoothly for me. They loved the fact that I put in the hard work and they saw the potential in me. Throughout the interview process, I happened to meet one of the executives in the hallway. As usual, I was friendly and I shared with him that I'm looking to achieve a position in a high-tech company. I also said, who knows, maybe I'll end up working here. He then gave me that look and I knew exactly what that look meant. You? You are the cleaning lady. That's never going to happen. I thought to myself, if that's what he thinks, I must be aiming in the right direction. <laughs> At the final interview, they called me and they said that I've done very well, but they're still testing other candidates. Now, the truth is, I was very happy because I knew at that point that if I got the job, it, it was because I deserved it 100%. And so it was. After two weeks, they called me in and they said, we tested three more candidates. Two of them have over a year experience in the field, but you still pass them in all stages. We want you here with us in this position. I got the job. <laughs> After a little less than a year, I got my first promotion and became a QA team leader. Two years after that, I got my second promotion and became the company's mobile operations manager. When I stand here before you, what do you see now? A woman, a black woman. What about a cleaning lady? Or maybe a high-tech influencer? Regardless of our skin, backgrounds, or circumstances, we are ultimately what we make of ourselves. So don't ever let anyone make you feel like you're crazy and can't achieve something. Never doubt your abilities. Never wait for others. And never ever give up.
Because the true knight in shining armor is you. Thank you.